Yo, 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 welcome back to another episode of Beats Corner. It's your boy Beats, and I'm back in the building. You know the routine, we're out here, we're rolling, and we are moving. You know how it goes down, you know the routine. Listen, make sure you subscribe onto the YouTube channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're all on streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You know the routine. Come on, man. Above. I took a, a week I hate us, bro. I took, I took, you know, the ones that I thought, yeah, yeah, it's what it is, you know, just relax, it's internationals. And you know what? I don't usually do that, you know. Let me just adjust myself. I don't usually, I don't usually do that, bro. I'm just, you know, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, let me do something for the internationals. But you know what? I just needed a break, bro. You know, obviously, us, man, we've got our own work commitments and whatnot. Bro. I'd love, I'd love to make this a full time job, you know. But I just love, I love talking about football. I love doing this thing where I come on here, speak my mind, talk about some football shit. You get me? And yeah, bruv, like there's a lot to to be uh, spoken about. There's a lot to touch up on. I feel like when you miss one week. You've missed out on a lot, so it's, you're, you're like, you have to catch up, you have to play catch up, but you know what it is? No, no, I allow it. It's not about playing catch up. It's just about saying what you got to say. Like, this is my show, Beats Corner, you get me? It's your boy, Beats. I don't know whether I should remix that, you know, them ones there. But, um, yeah, bro, I'm going to take my time, bro. I'm going to take my time and just air out what i got to say, you know, you get me? But, yeah, shout out to you, man, that are always tuning in week in and week out. I really appreciate it. Shout out to everyone um, supporting the thing. Like I said, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, man. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Um, yeah, very important, man. Like, I want to get the subs up, you get me? So, yeah, bruv, let me know in the comments what you feel like the next topic should be about. Do you get me? Like, whatever you want me to touch up on or whatever, but... I'm going to be speaking. You know what it is? I say a lot on the mic, innit? And I say a lot when it comes to football, innit? So, and sometimes I might miss. I might miss on a few things, innit? Do you get me? I don't think, I can't remember the last time I actually did a show alone. I can't. Usually, I'm always bringing someone on. But, um, bruv, let's get into it, man. Premier League back in action in full force. I'm recording earlier, man. I'm not going to touch on the other games because, let's be fair, <clears throat> on the Saturday, most of the big teams were playing, bruv. And, obviously, we had the Merseyside derby, which was in full effect, which was a great, great game. Um, then we had... Uh, what the hell is this? Move, you boy. Okay, say less. Just checking the scores and I'm seeing, uh, you know... Um, Sheffield United versus Fulham and right now it's 1-1. But yeah, we'll touch on that later. Um, so yeah, the big teams play. So you had the Merseyside derby, you had Chelsea playing Southampton, uh, Man City played Arsenal and Manchester United was also in action. Um, but yeah, it was about making sure who what team was going to bounce back. As everyone knows, United had to take the L with Spurs. And when I was on here with Chris Carr, I was fuming in it. You know them ones there. And... Um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm a fan, bruv. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a fan of Manchester United. And that L was very hard to swallow. But it is what it is. Like, obviously, the banner was running our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, like that. So, I just thought, you know what? Cool. Yeah, you, man, run run your banner, innit? Don't, don't, it's gonna, it affected me. Because me, I love to, I'll, I'm, I'll put my hands up. I love to run a lot of banner, innit? Do you get me? But, um. Yeah, I just thought, fuck it, man. I gotta take it in it, take it on the chin. You know them ones there. But bruv, listen. It wasn't only United who got a battering. It was Liverpool, the champions as well, last week who got a battering. Well, not last week, two weeks ago, just before international breaks, who got a battering as well. So obviously, they, their man had to hold seven. Bit of a mad thing. What, what do you expect? So it was about what team was gonna bounce back and. You're looking at that, you're thinking, all right, cool. Everton versus Liverpool. I mean, Everton haven't even beaten Liverpool in the league for God knows how many years. Um, I think the last... Every time they go there, it's like nil, 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 1-1 or 1-0 Liverpool. Or, you know that one's there. But this game was a whole different game changer. Do you understand what I'm saying? This was just like one of them ones where you go and you analyse and you think, all right, cool. These men are out here to play. Liverpool, who are the champions, they're going to show Everton who's boss. And Everton, who are literally on top of the league with after five games, well, 
prior to that but four games of thinking do you know what we're gonna flex our muscles here so um bruv let me not lie bruv this game was end to end do you get me and it was it was interesting it was interesting how it was going um obviously Mane scored first Robertson pulled it back for Mane who just pokes it in top bins uh, in, in in and around the six yard box but really really good goal they take the lead you're thinking all right cool it's normal normal procedure liverpool in control and for me liverpool were actually controlling the game bruv they control the midfield bruv tiago's tiago in it and i've come on here and i've literally lapped tiago i've i've literally given him the big praises that he deserves and which he does because there was one point in midfield yeah and i was telling my boy man like shawnee big up shawnee i was telling him yeah and i was like bruv if the way the core and Alan were moving in that midfield was ridiculous, yeah? These men wanted to fucking give uh, Thiago the 3D the way they were chopping and, you know, trying to take man out. All they needed was the tables, bro. Just a quick thing. Oh, you know them ones there where you're in a ring, yeah? And it's double team. It's like a hot, not even a hot tag. It's a, they're in the corner, in it, yeah? And they, and they get their opponent and they just give them like the double suplex. That's what they wanted to do to um Thiago, you know? Because Thiago was just fucking around and just doing what they got to do, innit? You know them ones there? I'm thinking, shit. These men don't give a fuck about Thiago, bro. They wanted to kill him. Boy, Jesus Christ. But, yeah, nevertheless, obviously, James Rodriguez doing what James Rodriguez does. Whips a ball in from the corner flag. And Michael King gets on top of that. And it's 1-1. Good header. Um, but before that, obviously, Van Dyke got chopped by Pickford. Now, this is the talking point. This is the talking point, yeah? If that was on road, Pickford's getting arrested. What Pickford did on the pitch to Van Dyke was brutality. The man chopped Van Dyke's leg to say he literally he, when it, you know what it was? Pickford saw Van Dyke and said, I'm taking you out, bro. I'm taking you out, and there's nothing you can do about it. Pickford, who I believe is one of the most he's he, He's not the best keeper. He made a few good saves in this game. He's not the best keeper. You understand? Everton need to look elsewhere because Pickford is going to fuck him up. Everton really needs to look elsewhere. I think how much did Pickford cost? 20, 27 million, if I'm not mistaken. Waste. And then I heard the stat that he's played every single Premier League game since he signed from Sunderland. That's a mad thing. But anyways, Pickford's done a mad thing over here and took, taking out Van Dijk. Van Dyke, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about Virgil Van Dyke. This man could possibly miss the whole of the season, bruv, because of that that challenge from Pickford. And to make matters worse for Liverpool fans, to rub salt in the wound, he didn't get a red card. He didn't. Even, I'm not sure. He didn't even get a booking. It's like, oh no, it's right. It's okay. Reports. It's been reported that it's the ACL. It's an ACL for Van, Van Dijk. That is a big blow for Liverpool, bro. That is a huge blow. This man has come into the club, made Liverpool's defence better, much more comfortable. I know he's got... I know they make mistakes there and then, but it happens. But he is a fundamental part of that defence. Matip has just come back from injury. You know? He's he's inconsistent. As, not, not inconsistent with form, but his injuries play a big part do you understand what i'm saying gomez is inconsistent one minute he's fucking uh, uh maldini the next minute he's phil jones you, you, you don't know you don't know with um with uh, uh, uh joe gomez do you get me and some and on top of their problems they got flipping allison who's out of who's out for like six to uh, i think it was six weeks and they got andrew and in goal guys I know I'm a United fan. Usually I'd be like, I'll pray for this. Bruv, hold tight Liverpool, bruv, because it's, it's, it's long, G. <laughs> it's long, but we're going back to that, yeah? Second half, obviously, playing again, red right tail, cool, cool. Playing good football, actually. Again, end to end. But something out of nothing, Mohamed Salah comes up with a goal out of nothing, he just literally is on the bounce, he's on the volley, he just whacks it, bang, bottom corner. 
and just look at Salah. That's 100 goals in 159 appearances. Mo Salah is a goal machine. I tweeted this earlier uh, on on that on on that day. He is a goal machine. You people need to start putting respect on Mohamed Salah's name. The guy is phenomenal, bro. Nothing but goals. Nothing but goals. Mohamed Salah is the Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo of the Premier League in this era. Yeah. I'm putting it out there. A lot of people might think I'm mad for, for saying that, but stats don't lie, G. 100 goals in 159 appearances. It's, it's, it's evident. It's there, G. He gets goals for Liverpool. He is there, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo bagged goals for Manchester United. Fantastic. And he, had he had stayed, he would have broken some records. Bye-bye, Shearer. Bye-bye. But Mohamed, what Mohamed Salah is doing is like, he's staying in the Prem and he's doing what he's doing. He's, he's The numbers are a joke. The guy is phenomenal. Start putting respect on Mohamed Salah's name because I don't want to hear this thing of, oh, Salah's this and Salah's that. You, man, that were calling him one season wonders. Respect the man, bruv. Respect the man because he pops up with he pops up with goals. Mohamed Salah is the Ronaldo of the Premier League right now in this era. I'm not say, bro, when they retire, when when uh, when they or when Mohamed Salah retires, people are gonna start uh, complaining or not even retires when he leaves the Prem or whatnot. Yeah, people will then start comparing who was better, Salah or Ronaldo. They'll start doing that. Now I'm not saying I'm, bruv. What Ronaldo did in the Prem was phenomenal, but I'm just saying, just start putting respect. This, that's that's what, for, look, listen, put it this way, yeah? That is what Salah is doing. For us to be comparing him to Ronaldo, that is what he's doing in the Prem. Take it or leave it. You can call me mad, you can call me whatever, but I'm just putting it out there for you, man, to understand and realise why certain men are comparing him to him. And, and that's why. Respect Mohamed Salah. Some people just say, yeah, but he's just there. Like, you know, even some of their own Liverpool fans, I'm thinking, brother, you not... Bro, appreciate what you have, you know? Appreciate what you have because I'm telling you right now, bruv, I will take Mohamed Salah in a heartbeat, bruv. The guy is just phenomenal, bruv. Whether you like him or you hate him, bruv, the guy is phenomenal. So big up Mohamed Salah. You keep doing your thing, G. You get me? It is what it is. But um, obviously, Everton got the equaliser. Calvert Lewin, he's popping up with the goals. He's popping up with the goals. He's he's in rich rich vein of form right now. Dominic Calvert Lewin. And the maddest thing was, you know, I'm 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 gonna be real with you, innit? Yeah. I've had a certain man, even before he was even popping, you know, getting these goals in and, and whatnot. We used to, you know, man them used to laugh at him like who's you Dominic Calvert Lewin, bruv. Look what he's doing now. Anything's possible, bruv. The manager's backing him. And you know what? It's ever since, correct me if I'm wrong, it's ever since, yeah, uh, Duncan Ferguson took over as, you know, temporary manager, you just saw a change in, D in Dominic Calvert-Lewin and actually he just come in, he's, it's just it's just that arm around the shoulder to say, bro, you're, you, you've got you got talent there. You can score goals. There was one There was one time, yeah, this is how I knew he was in Rich Reina for me. He has so much, he's got, he's just oozing with confidence at the moment. A ball came over the top and the way he just touched it, I thought, I thought he was, I think that, yeah, it was offside. I didn't come out quick time. And I just looked at him and I thought, do you know what? This guy's on fire at the moment. Seven goals in the Premier League this season so far. We've only played about five, five games. He's on fire at the moment and a lot of people need to be paying a good, a Good look, good attention to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Really good header. If Van Dijk's there, he's clearing that. But Gomez didn't even jump. Dominic was in the air first time, bruv. One time, boom. And you knew what time it was. Simple, 2-2. Two -two. And then the third goal goes in. Lovely reverse pass from... Uh, No-look pass from Thiago. Again, baller. Gives it to Mane. Mane now squares it into flipping Henderson, who puts it at the back of the net. We're all said that what Liverpool fans are celebrating. They think they've won it at Goodison once again until the offside rule plays in, uh, comes into play. VAR fucks Liverpool in their ass. Now, I'm going to be as real as fuck. That's not offside. You know why? <clears throat> you, you, know, you know why I would even say it's not offside, yeah? And a lot of people would, you know, if you don't know, you, you will know. Manny's walking away. 
to, uh, away from goal. He's not going towards goal. Correct me if I'm wrong, you man, in the comment section. When the offside rule was originally playing, it's for players that were going to, going towards goal. Manny was walking. Was he, his back was uh, to uh, um. His back was towards uh, towards the goal, and he was going. He's walking the opposite direction when he received that ball. Then he turned. That's number one. Number two, he wasn't offside. The, you could see clearly he wasn't offside. I, I me, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, you man, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying and whatnot. You get me? Did <laughs> you, bro? Liverpool got fucked by VAR, bruv. And now these men want to start appealing. Bruv, it is what it is. Things like this happen, man. It happens. It happens. Decisions like this happen. And when you're... Obviously, they're flexing their muscles at the moment because they're the champions, isn't it? They're going to do that. You know, they're applying for, you know, for it to be reversed and shit like that. I don't even know. But Liverpool, you got to hold it. Well, you got to hold that one. You got to hold that one. Unfortunately, things like this happen, man. Do you get me? And... It happens. It happens. But good game. It finished 2 2. Um I just feel like Liverpool are there. Obviously they're in and around. So I'm not messing in and around. You're second at the moment. But I just feel like if Everton continue this form that they're in, you never know. You never know. I'm not saying they're gonna out here, gonna be out here to win the league, but you never know. I thought they would have beaten Liverpool. Uh, that's what I actually thought. Um, but I was wrong. Uh, ended up being 2-2. Uh, Liverpool needed to bounce back. They did with their performance. Obviously, the result tells you another story. But if you watch the game, you will see that Liverpool bounced back. Um, Richarlison trying to break Thiago's legs. Um, yeah, unbelievable. The guy literally mocks Liverpool every time. Every time he's always tweeting this, he's saying this. Especially when they're going against Liverpool. He's always tweeting the most. Richarlison, hold this one. Red card in that. Get me. So, big up, big up, big up you, innit? Do you get me? The way he just... Cr Honestly, bro, I thought, what the hell is this? I thought... You know, you know what? There was one point I thought, do you know what? This is literally... What, 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 this, is, this is a tornado match. Like, where there's bare tag teams. There's bare tag teams in the ring. Tornado, tornado tag team match. You know in WWE, uh, not even Raw versus SmackDown, even even now, bruv, right? Where you got you can you can pick a tornado match with tag teams. That's what I thought it was on, on the Liverpool pitch. Sir, man, we were just tag teaming. Real talk. And Richarlison said, fuck it, I'm going to go alone, bruv, and try to take, take Thiago out. Scum in it. You get me? But sometimes that's what you need. You need a bit of feistiness in, in, in derbies like that. Over the years, we ain't had that in the Merseyside derby, but this one was different. It was a little different. Mm. But Liverpool fans, I'd like to know how you men are feeling, bruv. Van Dijk, ACL, it hasn't even been confirmed properly, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm going to have to look into that. How are you guys feeling, Everton fans? Listen, Richarlison read, but you, it was a draw. You got the point. You're still on top of the league. I'm sure you'll be buzzing at the moment. Let me know your thoughts, man. Big up you. I think I've covered, I've covered a lot there. Pickford. Liverpool fans are coming for you, bruv. They're coming for you. Hold tight, you in it. They're gonna like coming for you. Say less. I big up Dinya as well, yeah, because the guy can cross the ball, bro. That guy is something else. I just wanted to shout him out because he's different gravy. You get me? Yeah, next game. Listen, Chelsea, Southampton. You man, what are you telling me, man? What what are you telling me? What are you telling me? All right, all right, all right, cool. Timo Werner on the score sheet. Scores twice. Do you get me? Lovely goals, by the way. Um, the second goal was really cheeky of him. Loves the keeper, then heads it. You know, really, really good. Really, really good goals. Scored really good. Two good goals. Um, Danny Ings on the score sheet got the equalizer. Um, not even equalizer. Got them back into the game just before half time. Goes run. Uh, Kepa, two one. The second goal from Southampton. You guys need to go see it. It's Kepa again. He's come out. I. I think I can't remember what defender it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I believe it was Zuma, and Zuma was just standing in the same spot when all of this was happening. Not once did he even run towards goal to try help defend. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sure it was Zuma. He was, he was standing in the box, but far away when all of this was happening. When they were trying to make sure they got a goal, 
eventually they got their goal, um, making it 2-2. Uh, Chelsea bounced back straight away, two minutes after. Kai Havertz, uh, Werner assisting, uh, just squaring it to Kai Havertz, who got his goal as well, making it 3-2. But it was heartbreak. It was heartbreak for Chelsea again. 3-3, free, free Vestergaard, Walcox just put it in the box. Vestergaard's got a touch. And it's 3-3. Free, free. Bruv, listen, credit to Southampton because they kept digging and digging and digging. They kept fighting and fighting. They they were stubborn. They weren't laying down. Southampton, fair play to them. I'm, what I'm saying, I know I put them in the bottom three. Or, excuse me. I know I put them in the bottom three for my prediction. I'm saying that because if Ings gets injured, it's peak, bro. Where are the goals going to come from? Yeah, all right, cool. Vestergaard scored against Chelsea. That's fantastic. Uh, I think the other one was Che Adams, if I'm not mistaken. Cool, cool. But is Che, is che Adams as, as consistent as uh, uh, Danny Ings? Say less. Do you get me? Be easy with that. Chelsea, you man, you man, you man. Listen, you got the players. You got, you're got. you doing well. Cool. You're scoring goals. That's not your problem. You're leaking. You're leaking. You are leaking. You man are moving like uh, 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 you're you're moving as if like you're moving like diarrhea. You're just you're just everywhere, bro. What's going on? Loose stools and that, bruv. What's going on, bro? I came. I, I was on here with Usman. Big up Usman uh, from Usman Talks United. You man, go make sure you check his channel out. I was, I was with him with Usman. He said, when he said he believed Ch uh, Lampard would be the first one to get sacked, I, I was shocked when he said that. But when he broke it down, I said, you know what? You got a point there. My boy said it the same. He said, bruv, Lampard needs to get your question. And it's not to say, yeah, it's not to say, guys, yeah, that I, I wasn't aware of it. I was. But I thought I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Fuck the benefit of the doubt now. This brother is on the ropes, bro. You man have spent peas. It's peak, you know. You spent money, G. Mm. And you can't see out a game. Free free with Southampton. Free free with West Brom. My friend. A lot of questions need to be asked and you must answer it. This is not this is. Deep man, I'm moving as if this is fee for you, know, bro. Lampard, you need to you need to check yourself. You need to come correct, bro. You can't you can't hold the lead, bruv. You can't. Wh what's going on? You can't you can't manage your team and tell them, look, listen, hold it, just be easy. When is Lampard gonna get questioned for his managerial um, tactics and whatnot? Because all of us are quick to uh, to uh, um, talk about Oli, which I will talk about later on. Because I haven't got a problem with talking about Oli. A lot of a lot of man them are quick to talk about Oli. Even opposition fans. You, you, you know them ones there? But Lampard, my G. Bro, we need to start G-checking my man, bruv. Because, listen, Chelsea fans. I don't care if Lampard's a legend, bro. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was a legend at Man United. He still is. As a player. He still gets scrutinised. You, man, need to actually wake up, smell the coffee, and look at what you have right now. Yes, Lampard's a legend. Is he a good manager? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think he's the best manager out there. You lot have given him this this opportunity, this title of, yeah, yep, yep, you're the Chelsea manager, cool, cool. You're forgetting where he's coming from. This is unacceptable, G. It's unacceptable. You need to get a more experienced... Once you get a more experienced manager... It's peak, bruv. Lampard ain't experienced like this, G. This ain't... Bruv, I'm not trying to hear that, bro. He can't handle it. He can't handle the pressure. He's, he's, his tactics are all over the place. He can't even manage his, his, own, his own team to hold a lead. Game management is appalling, bruv. Lampard, brother, it's not good enough, G. It's not good enough. Bruv, eyebrows need to be raised. I respect Lampard, you understand, as a player. When it comes to the manager, when he's talking the most, the other day I see him having a go at Klopp when they played him. Remember, like at the, at the end, of, at the back end of last season, you man got piped. You got you, you man got piped by Liverpool um, when Liverpool were gonna lift the trophy. Then you were talking shit about Mourinho. Mourinho said, "Bro, 
I scored you, rude boy. Don't do that, man. Show a bit of respect. All right, you're at Chelsea. You don't need to be piping up, bro. Just do your job. Fix yourself. Come correct, man. It's not about doing this thing, trying to flex your muscles and that. Car rude boy, you ain't got no muscles. You've only just started with a few, you know, dumbbell KGs and uh, Bramovich is just giving you a brand new gym. And you just don't know what to do with it, G. You ain't, you ain't got the experience, bro. You ain't got the experience. You're just out here just moving like a like a headless a fool, bro. You can't be doing that, man. Respect your elders, man. Just respect the man them that have been doing this thing for a long time, bro. Don't be piping up like that, man. Come correct, Lampard. Yeah? Car, you, your thing needs to get questioned with the way you move, with the way you manage. It ain't good enough, bro. You've got a good... Bro, you've got players there, G. You've got players there. And you just, it just seems that like you don't even know how to utilise it. You don't even know how to manage your game. Game management is appalling. Everything's appalling. I don't think you're good enough for like, uh, for Chelsea. I think your time's going to come up, bro. I think your time's going to come up. I'll be surprised if you see the end of the season out. I'm, t I'm, I'm saying that all right now. I'm be surprised if, you know, Lampard sees the end out of, uh, sees the end of the Chelsea term at the end of the season. We'll see. I could be wrong, bro. I thought you could turn it around and do what he's got to do. But that three, three, two, three, three games in in this in 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 five in five Premier League games. Are you dumb? Get out of here, man. The fucking appalling, bro. Chelsea. Say less, man. Say less. Is what it is. Man City versus Arsenal, one nil. Raheem Sterling on the score sheet. Arsenal, let's talk, man. What's going on? I see fucking Cancelo, bruv, twisting and turning. I think it was Sabios, if I'm not mistaken, bruv. I think Sabios is still dizzy. Don't think he's had a good night's sleep right now, bro. You, man. Arsenal fans, talk to me, bruv. I was actually trying to give you some a bit of praise of... Uh, Went back to watch the highlights again because I wasn't really concentrating on the game. Let me not lie to you. Arsenal. I'm not even trying to mock the thing. At least, you know what it is? You kept it down to 1-0. You know them ones there. I thought City were playing good football, you know. They're playing, they're playing very, very well. That's that's classic City. Yeah. Old tight Saka as well. Wonder boy, bruv. He had a chance. He could he should have... For me, he should have scored, but, you know, it's just one of them things. I thought Saka was, it was standout for Arsenal. Um, what do you do, bro? It's an L, you lose that one. You have to bounce back from from, from that defeat, man. It's Man City, you know, at the end of the day. But, um, what are you saying, Arsenal, man? Are you happy with that performance? I don't know. I was in between, you know. I thought I was going to give you credit, but you know, when I when I watched the highlights again, and I thought, ah, cool. It's a bit of a bit. It's a bit of a myth, no? And then Thomas Partey was on the bench. That's what I wanted to talk about, which I will talk about in a bit. Yeah, but um, Thomas Partey was on the bench. Yes, a lot. You know what it is? You know what it is? I feel like a lot. Like big up, big up the Arsenal fans as well, because I think well, we've watched Thomas Partey. Football fans, you know, you watch Thomas Fight. I just feel like there's a, a, a there's a, a, there's a lot of Arsenal fans who haven't watched Thomas Partey. He's a very very good midfielder, good defensive midfielder. He's not someone that's gonna obviously join the attack and do all them things there, but he's a good defensive midfielder. I think there's nothing wrong in celebrating that you got a top player there. I think the way you lot have carried yourself. To make a music video for someone like Thomas Partey is a bit of a mad thing, innit? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But, do you know what? Your fan base is different, innit? It's, it's different. I'm not going to be here to... Um, <laughs> do you know what? Yeah. I've <laughs> For years, bro. I, I, I'll be real. I'll be real, yeah. I've hated Arsenal all my life. Okay, but um, because of the fans, really, not all the fans, but some fans, and I just feel like you overdo it, and then when you overdo it, you step back and you realize why did we overdo that, man? And you start, you know, turning against your player. I hope you don't do it with Thomas Partey because he's a quality midfielder. Do you understand? And and I know for a fact some of you haven't watched him. 
Just be real. Put your hands up and be like, ah, you know, I've never seen it. But some will lie to you and say they have. YouTube sometimes, it doesn't do well for, diff you know, it just just watching. When, back in the day, we were watching when, you know, the league used to be on Sky Sports and, and whatnot. Just just admit. But just If you haven't watched him, you haven't watched him. It is what it is. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I'm being wrong. Maybe he should have started. I thought maybe let's like, just chuck him in. Use it, you know. I don't, I don't understand why you, you bring him on. You're one nil down. You bring him on. It's not going to change the game. I mean, you want to go for the goal, no? I, 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 I don't understand. I don't understand why why Arteta did that, but I could be wrong. I'm not here trying to say Arteta shit. Don't don't be putting words in my mouth. I'm just asking. There's nothing wrong in questioning someone. Arteta, he looks like he's doing well. And big up Arteta, but I'm just questioning why he would do that. I mean, it's not like Partey is going to offer you a lot going forward. I'm not saying he's not one for eye for goal or whatnot, but how many goals does he score a season? Do you get me? So, bruv, at the end of the day, it's an L for Arsenal. you got to bounce back, innit? I'm not slating you, man. I'd, usually, I come on here and I'll laugh about it and, and tell you how shit you are, but you only conceded one. Back in the day, you'd be conceding three, four, five against Man City, but obviously, things are changing out there. So, big up Arsenal, big up you, man. You know, change is happening on your side. It's happening. So, I'm not here to slate you or whatnot. Five Premier League games in. Let's see what happens, man. Anything can happen. Will you get top four? I don't know. I don't think so. I could be wrong. I don't think you will. I don't even know if Man United will. And that's the game I'm going to go on to. Newcastle versus Manchester United. 4-1 to Manchester United. Um, Shaw got the own goal for Newcastle. About two, three minutes in. Can you imagine? Straight away. Straight off the blocks. Um, but Man United made sure they came back. Maguire. Harry Maguire on the score sheet. Uh, equalising for Manchester United. Who I will talk about at the end. Um, <clears throat> uh, United were, you know, d dominated from... from Even when we scored, we scored the own goal. We dominated from minute one all the way to the end. And um, at first, we weren't taking our chances. Yep, 1-1. One, one. One one for a long time. We won a penalty, which I didn't think was a penalty. I didn't think it was a penalty, but um, yeah, it was a penalty. Um, Bruno takes it, and uh, it Darlo saves. Yeah, Darlo saves the penalty. Uh, yeah, it's the first penalty Fernandez has missed in God knows how long. Um, but United didn't. If that didn't stop United. United kept on going and going. Um, the likes of uh, um, Van der Beek and Pogba came on as well. Dan James and them man, Fred came off. Um, I believe when you have them players on the pitch, the create the creativity just changed. It just made us more sharper, more more crispy. Do you get me? Like it was it was different. It was different. And I don't understand what I, I don't know what it's gonna take for this Oli Pussio to make sure Van der Beek starts starts uh, to start games for Manchester United in the Premier League. Uh, Mata, Mata started, who I believe was the man of the match for me. The guy was different, gravy, head and shoulders above the rest, bruv. I'm not even going to lie to you, bruv. The guy was just smooth, silky. He knew what to do. His intelligence is all over the place. You get, you get me? He's, he's, he's high. He's up there. You get me? He's gravy. But obviously, he just ain't got the legs, unfortunately. But he plays it smart, man. He knows he ain't the quickest. He knows. So he's going to, you know, use what he has around him to make sure it's effective. And that's what Mata was doing throughout this whole game, man. Fair play to Mata. Um, obviously, Rashford uh, got the assist for Bruno Fernandes' uh, goal, which was a really lovely goal. Back heels it for Bruno Fernandes, who puts it, curls it, top bins. Really tight angle, but he got it there, making it 2-1. Aaron Wan-Bissaka made sure he got his first professional goal and what a goal it was a really tight angle as well smashes it into the roof of the net and Aaron wan is up and running with his first goal um a lot of people get on to him and i understand it's, it's very hard for him um he hasn't been in the best form as of late uh considering especially with that 6-1 uh, pounding even prior to that he just wasn't up for it him mcguire bruv they've been they've been sh a shamble bruv do you get me it's been shambles but yeah, Basaka got his goal, making it 3 1. And Rashford was on the score sheet as well. Bruno Fernandes assist. Rashford doing what Rashford does best, slotting it under the keeper. Boom. It is what it is. Manchester United win 4 1. Now, big up them, man, for bouncing back 
um, after their six one defeat, that must have been laying weighing heavy in their on their heart. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, you know, United were doing what United were doing, you know, had to do, and I was dominating. Didn't see anything that was tactical that was master stroke from uh, uh, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Nope. And every time he keeps doing this thing of there's no reason as to why he left this person out, that person out, tactics. Everything is fighting. We keep fighting, fighting, fight. What the fuck is fighting, bro? What the fuck is fighting? I'm sorry, guys. I'm not going to give my man the credit for the 4-1 win. I'm not doing that. That's all That's all long. Big up the players there, really, because it's like they want to... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, for me, I just believe that they knew that 6-1 defeat was bad and they needed to bounce back. Do you get me? This ain't good enough, bro. It's not. Don't don't fall for the trap. Like, ah, right, cool, we won. Let's, you know, Oli back it. No, bro. No, we don't want this type of manager at the club, bro. Because our next game is PSG, so you will see how things are different. You will see. This thing ain't. Don't fall for that trap, man. Don't fall for that trap. Uh, the Maguire thing. Like, obviously, during uh, the week, Maguire got sent off in his international sent off during international break. Um, two yellow cards in the space of thirty odd minutes. Yeah, stupid. Um, he's all over the place. He's been off form. He gets to, he gets to, he gets sent off. And my thing is the pundits now they're all out here talking the most. Maguire, this we need to be careful of his mental health status. Rare tear tear la la la. Why can't we just acknowledge the fact that he's not playing well, and he should be removed from the firing line? Why is it now that you might want to start using the term mental health? Why are you man not questioning his his eighty million pr- 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 uh, price tag? Why are you man not questioning that? I don't see you man doing that. But when it comes to players like Paul Pogba and whatnot, you man want to fucking rinse him. You man don't care about mental health. I've never heard you man talk about mental health for Paul Pogba with the way you lot describe him and and and, and you uh, abuse him or, uh, on 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 the papers and whatnot. You pundits, journalists and fans that go on and talk shit about Paul Pogba. Not only Paul Pogba, the likes of Raheem Sterling as well. Yeah? Don't 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 you dare use that word mental health because mental health is a is a, is a mental health is a sensitive uh topic. It's a sensitive thing to be even mentioning. So when you're here saying we need to fog, we need to wa- uh, watch out for his mental health status and whatnot. Brother, this is football, G. Talk about his footballing ability, not his fucking mental health uh, 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 status. For what? You man were quick to flipping uh, ridicule all of these other players. But when it comes to Harry Maguire, I don't see none of you man mentioning the price tag. I don't see none of you man saying, yeah, he's not, you know, he, he needs to be removed from the firing line. I don't see none of that. All of a sudden, we need to look after Harry Maguire, his mental health. Da, da, da. And why is that, huh? Why is that? Why is that? Say less. Stop making excuses for Harry Maguire, bro. He's been off form. He's been off form. Take him off. Take him out of the uh, of the of, of the starting eleven. Why should he be starting? No, makes sense. A man just come back. A man just come back from thing. A man just got, uh, did his thing in Greece or whatever, wherever it was, right? Going through his problems. Gareth Southgate brings him straight back in. You know them ones there. Shouldn't Southgate be getting questioned as well? Make sense. Make it make sense, man. Make it make sense. It don't make sense. This is and and Southgate as well. You 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 as well. This is what you get for not even bringing Folded and Greenwood back into the squad. You've punished them already. Why are we punishing them even more? For what? You're an idiot, man. Your your job's soon gonna go, bruv. You're an idiot, bruv. You don't even know what you're doing. You're lost. And then man wanted to link him to the Manchester United job. I the pe- the people that were linking Gareth Southgate to the Manchester United job, go suck your mum. Facts. Go suck your mum. I don't want to hear all that crud. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about, man? I ain't got time for that, man. Keep it moving, bro. Do you get me? It's all long. They're off form. They're off form. Talk about them. Not talk about their mental health status, bro. All of a sudden, we want to start you drawing that out. For what? Sympathy in that. Are you bun that, man? Burn that, bruv. Come on, G. If I'm here talking about Harry Maguire, I'm talking about his football, his football, how off form he's been, then you want to question, oh, we need to take it easy with the way we're talking about him. Are you skunked? Move, man. Get the fuck out of here, bro. 
are you talking about? That's silly. If I'm gonna, if I if I'm gonna if I'm gonna address something, I'm gonna address it there and then, G. It's my job to address whether he's doing well or he's not doing well on the pitch. I don't care about off the pitch. I don't care about his... What do you mean mental health? When, bro, that is straight... Con, it's just... You're just... Honestly, you're you're being a hypocrite. Don't do that. Contradicting everything. Is, don't do that. You man, stop doing that. Do you get me? That really annoyed me that day when I saw that, bruv. I think it even popped up on a chat, on a group chat. I can't even remember. I was just shaking my head. I was thinking, bruv, why are we making excuses, G? Anyways, Oli, Oli gonna social. Let me tell you something, bruv. Don't think you're off. Don't think you're off because I went on um, on a tangent with um, Harry Maguire. You're not off the ropes, G. I don't care if we won four one, bro. I don't care if you won four one. You're still on the ropes, G. You're still on the ropes. Time is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Big up Madonna and Justin Timberlake and them, man. Get me if you know that. You know that, man. What's up? I only got four minutes to save the world. I only got four minutes to save your job. You need to, you need to flip in. Make sure. Because I know your ass is clenching, yeah? I know when you go to the toilet, you're thinking about it. You're, you, you just dream and you go, <gasps> you're fired. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's popping up in your head. You're stressing, rude boy. You're stressing. This job's too big for you. Ollie and Lampard, you're on the ropes. Ropey. It's ropes. It's rope time. Don't want to hear all that crud talk, bruv. You man, honestly. You know how it goes, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, bro. I come on here. I talk what I got to say. I got to say what I got to say. It's been an interesting weekend, bro. Obviously, we got more football at the moment. Uh, when I last checked the scores, um, with the game that's going on right now, which is between Sheffield United and Fulham, I think it's finished. It finished one-one. Um, you know, just one of them things. And right now, Palace are playing uh, Brighton. Which is a derby. I feel what did, what derby do they call that? I think they call that the M M twenty sign derby, whatever. Don't know why it's a derby, but it's just a bit silly. Um, but yeah, one 0 to Palace at the moment. Wilfred Zaha has just you know taking a penalty and scored. It's just one of them things. But listen, guys, I've come on here. I've spoken about what I think, especially. I think I went in depth with Liverpool. Um, yeah, I went in depth with Liverpool. I think Liverpool took over this week. Yeah, Liverpool took over. And um, it's interesting to see how that goes and what happens because I want to find out if Van Dijk is actually injured for six, six, uh, seven to eight months. If he is, because it hasn't even been confirmed. When this gets released, then we'll find out. But I don't think it's been confirmed. But if it is seven to eight months, Liverpool really, really, really... I don't know what they need to do. Maybe they have to go and buy a defender in the January window. But this is not good for Liverpool. Um, Van Dijk is a talisman for them. And for them to now lose him to a stupid tackle from Jordan Pickford. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't get booked or whatever. He didn't even get sent off. It's dangerous times. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool fans, hang in there. It's going to be a bumpy season for you guys. If it ends up that he's out for seven to eight months with the likes of Andrian and Goat currently, you're going to be leaking goals. Yeah, this is it's tough times. It's tough times. Old time Mohamed Salah, you are the man at the moment. People need to respect you. They need to put respect to your name. I called you the Cristiano Ronaldo of this era. People are going to look at me, listen to me and think I'm fucking deluded as a Manchester United fans. But sometimes you got to pay homage where homage is, needs to be paid. And he deserves the plaudits he gets. The man has been phenomenal in the Premier League since he's been playing for Liverpool. Do you understand what I'm saying? Liverpool took the chance with him. Klopp took the chance with him. And they went with it. And look at what he's delivered. Look at what he's produced and returned for Liverpool. He has returned a Champions League, a Premier League, a Club World Cup, a Super Cup. The guy has delivered, bro. And if we're talking about, you know, Premier League greats, he's up there now. So put respect on Mohamed Salah's name. 100 goals in 159 appearances. You understand? You need to put respect on Mohamed Salah's name. No more slander. Just accept it. You understand? To have players like this play in the Premier League is a blessing. So for us to now ridicule him because he's an op, 
would be stupid. Appreciate the football that you get and you receive. Appreciate the fact that he's doing wonders. He's a goal machine and he is a threat. One day he will leave the Prem and then all of you will start appreciating. Word of the day. Beaks Corner. Hey! <laughs> but listen, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for um, just, you know, making sure you're listening and whatnot. I appreciate the love that you, man, show. As usual, you know the routine. Catch me on the socials at Beats Corner, which is on Instagram, at Beats underscore Corner, which is on Twitter. You know the routine. You know how it goes. Um, yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. You know how it goes. But, yeah, it's your boy, Beaks. I'm signing out. Peace.